In this episode of the On.NET Show, Brady's coming back on, and he's going to show us how we could run a container that we deployed into Azure Container Instances. Thank you all for joining us for another episode of the On.NET Show. Now, we're going to continue from where we ended off the last time, and Brady's going to show us how he took that container that he published up mm -hmm. into the cloud, mm -hmm. and we're going to see how we can run it, right, inside right. of exactly. like Azure Container Instances exactly. or Kubernetes. So what you saw me do earlier was just right-click Publish. Uh, this is sort of the, the output of it. I get a Publish file or a Publish Settings file, just like I would if I were to right-click Publish to an IIS yeah. server. Um, it's just it points to an ACR instance, or you mentioned Docker Hub earlier. You can actually publish these to Docker Hub can repositories you? as well. Using so these same tools. Using the same tools. Right. This is all built into VS. So speaking of tools, I'm going to flip over to uh, the. I'm not going to go to that tool yet, but right now I'm going to flip over to the uh, to the portal. Okay. I'm specifically going to go right here to. This is my uh, registry that we created earlier. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go and click into that. You told me to zoom in, so I'm going to zoom out a little. Sure, that's fine. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to go down here to repositories. Okay. And what you should see is that I've got that map.generator there. Now in this case, you know, I might want to run this uh, particular thing right now. Uh, and we've got a bunch of different ways that you can run containers in Azure. Obviously, we've got support for Kubernetes. Obviously, we've got support for Linux containers on app service if sure. you really want to run a web app. Yeah. Like we talked about, this is more of a background thing. Yeah. Um, and I might want it to run for five minutes a day to process a queue. The okay. nice thing is with, uh, with uh, Azure Container Instances, I can actually go right into my portal. Oh, nice. And I can select on the tag that I want, in this case, my latest tag, and I can hit Run Instance. And I'm going to give it a cool name. Cecil is cool. Is that okay? I like that name. Okay. Um, I'm going to say one core is fine. Well, one right that should be enough. I don't need any IP addresses. I'm just going to be, you know, spinning. So I'm going to click OK, and you'll see up here that I have the ability to do Linux or Windows. I know that I have created a Linux container. Earlier, I checked the Linux box when I added Docker support yeah. inside of VS. Mm -hmm. So I'll click Linux there just to make sure that we're consistent because strange things might happen. Sure, sure, sure. Um, if it's thinking it's going to pull a Windows image and it pulls a Linux image. Yeah. Uh, obviously, that would, that wouldn't end well. Um, so you'll see that it's deploying right here. Okay. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just click on this deploying in progress link. And what you'll see is that while that ACI is actually deploying, it's going to you know, give us an update in a minute and I'll be able to click it. What's happening in the background here, you'll actually see once we get the resource created, is that uh, the ACI, the, the Azure Container Instance, is going to spin up Mm -hmm. And it's going to reach over into ACR. Yeah. It's going to say, I need this image. He gave me the, the URL for this image. I'm going to yeah. pull that image out. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to essentially do like a Docker run on that uh, container on image. That container. Yeah. And basically, it just starts up and begins to run. Nice. Um, and once that happens, you know, we'll actually see it running in here. One thing I will show you as well, I mentioned tools earlier. Um, I'm going to flip over here to VS Code. I'm kind of a VS guy because I'm you know, starting from you know Visual Studio perspective. Sure. Um, but I want you to see that we have all these tools in VS Code as well. So if I were to flip over here and show you this Docker tool, what you'll see is that I have all of these, the ability to see all of my registries, all of my containers that I might have up here, everything. And if I were to expand this, you'll see there is that exact same uh, image that I pushed up into ACR. And I have the capability even inside of VS Code. I don't even have to go out to the portal. I could right click that and say I want you to run an instance of it or deploy it as a web app. So which is, this is super cool. But tell me, how did that even show up there? Like, did, did I have to up? install an extension? That's, or that's like that? the. This is the Docker extension. This is for the VS doc, Code. for VS Code. Got it. Uh, there's also a Kubernetes extension for mm -hmm. uh, VS Code, which I'll show here in a moment. Okay. But you'll see right here. I right click on that image, and you can see pull image, uh, copy it, or deploy it to App Service. They don't have right. an ACI in here, but uh, I could actually run that as an App Service if it was a web app, and I wanted to do that. Right. And we also so. have the option to. Because you showed us how to do it in the portal. Yep. But we could also use the Azure CLI too. You to could use the Azure CLI. To. That's a good point. You could definitely use the Azure CLI. I haven't done that. Are those commands pretty interesting? We should try it out. We should try it out. Not should today, it. but we should try it out. We should. <laughs> uh, we don't have long. Okay, so my deployment's complete. I can go to my resource. Now remember, I didn't have my license code in there, and I'm using some paid features of that extension. So I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that we won't see anything nasty in the logs. Okay. But you'll see, just like I talked about, it's you know it failed at first. It's pulling. It's created, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if I can refresh it and see if it's actually still running, looks like it is. And I could go over here to the logs and I can see there's my worker oh, running. Oh, nice. 
So we can actually see the logs for that worker running directly right, in the right, portal right. for Azure Container instances. And this is all that fake data that was generated before. Mm -hmm. And essentially, you're just doing like a, a console write line, Pretty much. right? And then now that's showing up here Pretty inside much. the log. Well, I'm not using console write line. I'm using logger.log information. Oh, sorry. Logger log. Got it. Yeah, good Got details. Um, now I'm done running. I generated some data. Maybe I have some map, some map points. I'm cool. I can hit delete. And I probably spent like 13 cents. Nice. running that in the cloud. Uh, if you're processing a queue, maybe you have it running for five minutes. I think I did a calculation the other day, five minutes is I think 12 cents. Nice. So you really can save a lot of money on your background processes if you want to if you want to do this versus have a big Windows server with a lot of services running on it. Sure, so sure. that's using ACR to house your Docker container, yeah. um, your Docker image. Um, and, and then also ACI to run the image. To run the image. To run a single instance of that image. To run a single instance, yeah, exactly. Uh, for as long as I want or as short as I want. Uh, the other thing I'll show you is that we have these awesome tools for Kubernetes uh, directly inside of uh, VS Code as well. Um, and what I'll do is I just clicked on my Kubernetes node, so it's going to, um, the internet in here always seems a little slow. Uh, at this point, I would actually pull down uh, all of my Kubernetes clusters, and I've only got one, so it seems odd that it's taken, there we go. So there is my cluster. Now I could go out to the command line and do kubectl this, the yeah. way Jessica Dean does, she's awesome with it, sure. um, but I'm not as good as she is at these things. So I, amazing. She's amazing. So I like to do everything from within my tools here. And you can see that I, I can actually expand on namespaces and I've got a couple different namespaces. I want to make a new one. So what I would do in this case, and I love these kinds of features, mm -hmm. like I'm terrible mm -hmm. at like Kubernetes, YAML, and Helm, and all these things. I'm just not a YAML guy. Yeah. Um, so what I can do is I can click on this. I'll just click on this particular namespace here. And oh. it goes ahead and pulls down the YAML for me. Nice. So at this point, I can actually just get rid of this. I want, I want to keep the name. So I can actually get rid of these three. Then I can get rid of created, because it hasn't been created. And we'll call this namespace, uh, Cecil is cool, right here. And I love that I can just do this. I can do Control-Shift-P, and then see here, Kubernetes apply, oh, nice. and run that. And it says, I've got some things I need to do. I need to save the file first. And you see that created my namespace. I can go in here, and I can refresh. There's my Cecil is cool namespace. I can right-click it and just say, that's the namespace I want to use. Got it. So that's actually my new namespace that I want to party on. Now, a minute ago, you saw us copy this uh, image up into our Azure Container Registry, which we have over here. Yeah. And I'm going to go in one more time to that repositories area, if I can click it the right way. So you're back in the Container Registry. I'm back in the Container Registry, which is where my images live. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I'm here is because I want to get this URL right here. And that is the URL of my image in that registry. In the registry. So I could tell something like Kubernetes. Like where to go and get it. Where to go and get it. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to, I'm persnickety about that. So I'll make sure I only have what I need. Uh, and then I'll flip over here. And I've got one extension. Um, if I go over here and I do a search for Kubernetes, um, we've got two Kubernetes extensions. One of them really allows you to do like all the stuff that you're seeing, all the different, the pain, yeah. all the uh, stuff. And there's this other one here called Kubernetes Support, which gives some really handy snippets. Nice. If you don't know Kubernetes YAML, sure. if you're one of the three people I know that doesn't know Kubernetes YAML. Like Kubernetes configuration made easy. Yes, exactly. So what I'll do here is I'll say deployment, and you'll see that I've got this Kubernetes deployment. I'll hit enter, and oh, I, nice. I'm like, what did I call the actual container instance when we did it? I uh, think it's Tesla. Map.generator. Cool. That's the name of the... Uh, Namespace. Oh, the namespace. So I'll say yeah. map dot generator, and I think I have to copy that everywhere. So I'll do that. My app. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. My apologies. I don't need to open up any ports. So you can take that out. And take that out. Save the file, and then once again, copy that. My, the URL of my actual image, and if I paste this in here, there we go. Now that is my Kubernetes YAML file, and if I were to now say Control Shift P and do a Kubernetes apply on this one more time, it's going to say down here, it was going to create a new resource for me. I'm okay with that, so I'll hit create. It's gone ahead and it's gone out and created that resource for me, which is good because we're about out of time. If I were to go here to workloads and refresh it, go to deployments, there's my map.generator. If I were to expand that, there is the pod running. If I were to right click that and say follow logs, now we're actually looking at the logs of the container 
running inside of AKS. That's cool. Can we go back to the file really quickly? I had one question I wanted to make sure, totally. sure. We, we, we got clear for everyone. Mm -hmm. So the first time you came in and created a, or edited a, um, a YAML file, mm -hmm. and you did apply, it was a namespace. Right. And now you're doing it to a deployment. Right. The YAML file looks the same. All YAML kind of looks the same. Right. But like, it's different. It was different types of it was different types files. Of, yeah, it was different so types. So just for the folks that are watching, what's the difference between a namespace and a deployment? Okay. Uh, it's very much like if you're familiar with C Sharp, you can almost think about it like a, a, an object inside of your namespace. The namespace is sort of a logical grouping of all the different things. Yeah. Um, so in my case, I'm using default for most everything. I've got another app in here called Distance API that we talked about the other day. Yeah. Um, so you can use a namespace to essentially logically group like different groups of microservices that you might have running inside of your okay. cluster. Another so can we think about like projects? Like these are different these, applications? They might be different projects, but in the case of say Azure Dev Spaces, um, I would if I wanted to create a dev space, I might basically have a space called Brady. And you might have a space called Cecil. And you and I might be working on the same API mm -hmm. so that we can work on those APIs in our production, not a good idea. Staging, not really a good idea. Development cluster yeah. without bl blowing up anything that's already been published in development. So okay. you might have a default namespaces, which is usually the default name mm -hmm. for a uh, default namespace. Yeah. Um, and then around that, you would have other namespaces where people could party without messing up everything that's in default. Got it. You Got might it. even do something like have production staging Death. True. So it's inside. like creating like isolation. Creating isolation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the the next thing that I created was a deployment, which is essentially taking a taking an image and putting it into the cluster. Got it. Uh, and then you have other concepts. We could do this all day, uh, like pods and services sure, 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 and sure, those sure, kinds sure. of things. But that's when you get linked off to deeper documentation. Got it. Got so, it. Yeah. So it sounds like we're gonna have to have you come on another time. Oh, we need to do like a deep dive into sure. like Kubernetes mm -hmm. like vernacular. That'd right? be good. And some of these things. That'd be great. Um, and another person you should have on for that would be if you could come like one of the times that Nish is around. Oh, um, nice. Nish is great. He's written a lot of our books. Um, if I were to go out to, I'm not doing him a favor. Uh, if I were to go out to dot, dot net, uh, forward slash architecture, you'll see that. We have a bunch of ebooks available that you can download. So, how to oh, architect nice. cloud native apps, right. uh, Blazor, uh, gRPC, gRPC for WCF, which is huge, nice. um, and then all other kinds of stuff. So, these are some great ebooks, and we have more ebooks coming out in the future on building cloud native apps. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, if you see Nish uh, around, he's a great person to. We should have Nish on the show. Uh, sure, we should definitely. One. And this is a great resource. I'll make sure that we have it inside of the show notes. So for anyone that's watching and mm -hmm. they want to download them and mm -hmm. you know take a read through them, exactly. they, they could do that. Exactly. And if you were to go up here, if you're really getting into microservices, uh, if you were to just go to the .NET homepage, we actually have a link right here on microservices. Yeah. And that's when you can go in and you can kind of learn you know, how to build microservices. It's great videos with Hanselman and some other folks. Uh, and then even more books. So you could get down here to these books. Um, and these books are fantastic. Uh, this book by Caesar and Nish has been read by so many folks as yeah. we tour. Anybody who's doing .NET and microservices, we are like, how did you get started? They give us this page. That's amazing. It's so like, this is your de facto getting started resource. So, so there's um, tons of resources that folks could use to just mm -hmm, learn mm -hmm. about stuff, try it out. Mm -hmm. You know, we have free tools, Visual Studio Code mm -hmm. and the extensions. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's it's almost like a very low barrier to entry. Mm -hmm. it's, to it's fantastic. Um, and when you talk about tools, I did something just before coming on the show, which absolutely blew my mind. Everything that you saw me do in here in terms of using Docker containers, communicating with a registry, communicating mm -hmm. with an AKS cluster, all of these things, just before the show, I sat with Tim Hewer and did it all in VS Online. Oh, man. With nothing running on my computer. I did not have Docker on my machine, nothing. Nice. Like all in the cloud. Like built the whole thing in the browser, deployed mm -hmm. it from the browser. It was fantastic. Nice. So imagine a day when you don't even have to install Docker to do Docker containers. And then my machine is just like low powered, like yeah. terminal, yeah. essentially. That's cloud native development. That's great. Good. All right, man. Well, hey, Brady, thank you so much no for problem. coming on, man. This mm -hmm. was great information, mm -hmm. um, a lot of cool resources, and, and we saw a lot of great stuff in terms of containers and Azure container instances and Azure you know, container registry and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope you all learned stuff. Um, if you like the show, make sure you, you know, click a like, share it with your friends, or leave us a comment below. If you'd like to see some more of these types of things, let, let us know what you think about it. Mm -hmm. But thank you all for watching and spending some time with us on the Odd.net show.